Hello everybody and welcome, this is Roland Hartman from Graphic in Motion and in this tutorial I will show you how you can customize my Particle Splash logo reveal template. Uh, before we get started with the customization, I just want to point out quickly that this template requires the Trap Code Particular version 2 plugin, so if you do not have this plugin then you won't be able to use the template because all this fancy stuff that you see here is basically created with uh, trap code particular. Okay, so now let's get started with the customization. Now the first step of the customization will be that we import your logo. So therefore we just enter uh, our enter logo composition and if you do not find it in the timeline then you can also find it here in the project area. So let's enter this composition and you see here you have my logo as a placeholder and to import your logo you can double click in this empty space here or you can also just go to File and choose Import, which is now unfortunately out of the recording area, Import File. And this will do the same. And now we are just moving or navigating to a folder. You can find your logo. And for the sake of demonstration, I will use this uh, Circus Illustrator file. And I will just drop it on top of my placeholder and I will disable the placeholder. You can of course also delete it and then I press S and scale my logo and let's say the size should be approximately like 50% and now we'll just position it a little bit better. So because I want to put in some text uh, beneath here I will just move it up a few pixels. So select the logo and with the arrow keys just move it up. So the next step is to edit our tagline and therefore we move on to the next composition called enter tagline and you see that our logo is already here and it's just a guide layer so it helps you to position your title. And you see that we have this green layer here which is a simple text layer and a marker that says edit tagline behind this marker and this is because in the beginning here um, the title is animated on and if you have a longer title then this can take a while so make sure that the cursor is uh, behind the marker and you are sure that your title is fully revealed. Then you can just double click the, the text layer and now you can enter whatever you want and of course you can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the color. In my case I used the Chill Sounds font and uh, a link to this font is also included in the download in the links folder. So for now I will just stick with this font and make it a little bit bigger, let's say 40. And I will move it up a bit, like so. And I will also take over a color of our logo here. And let's say this is perfect for now. Now we can move on to our render composition. Of course, if you want, you can now import your audio. You can use the audio composition and just the same as before, go to File, Import File and import your audio, drag it into the audio comp and then move on to the render composition. In the render composition, you will see that now we have our logo in here. So the particles changed and the particles will take over the color from whatever you put in. So whatever you put in here will afterwards affect the colors of and of course also the size of the emitted particles here or the shape of the emitted particles I should say. So now we can change the background color and therefore we can select our setup composition or layer I should say right on top here and move to the effect controls panel. And you see in the effect controls panel we have a few different options to customize the template. The first one is the vignette, so if I uncheck this box you immediately see that in the edges get brighter, so this is a classic vignette effect. Then we have the background color number one and now we want to change the background color. So let's say for this example I just want to make this scene a bit darker. I will move to a frame where I can see my logo so that I can sample some colors from my logo here. And I will just take this color picker and pick this dark color here and you see it has no effect because now we do not see any of the background so we have to move back again 
uh, to a frame where you can see our background and now you see uh, the effect that this had and now I want to change the background color number two uh, and it's basically only a simple ramp so color number one is in the middle and color number two is uh, in the edge here to something let's say quite dark black nearly black and maybe I also make this a little bit darker so that we have a nice dark environment and now I will take over the same colors for my floor. So let's take over color number one, color picker, and color number two. And maybe I also want to decrease this a bit more to make it a little bit more dark. Like so. Now we have a nice dark and contrasty scene here. If you take a look, that looks quite cool. Okay, what else can you do here? You see we have another checkbox that says reflection on off. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. If you uncheck it, the reflection is gone. So reflection on, reflection off. And now you can also change the strength of the reflection. So for example, in this dark scene, maybe I can increase the opacity a bit. So instead of the standard value of 17, I can put in 25 and you will see it will make it a little bit more obvious. I can crank this up up to 100. And then it will be really fully opaque, but that's definitely too much. So let's say a really intensive reflection would be around 40, I think. And then you can also change the reflection blur. So if it's really crisp, then set it to zero. Probably looks a little bit strange. And standard value is five. But if you really want, you can crank this up, let's say maybe 15. And then you have really blurred uh, reflection. But for now, we'll stay with the standard settings of 5. And yeah, this is basically it for a fast and easy standard customization. If you want to change this look further, then you can, of course, also change the particle settings. And I will only show you a few things here quickly. So, for example, if you take a look at our layers here, we have uh, quite a bunch of particle layers and we always have the the particles on top and then we have the reflections and they are on separate layers here. So if you want to change one of these, for example, let's change the fountain, the look of the particle fountain. And what is the particle fountain? Let's turn it off and you will immediately see these are the, yeah, I do not even know how I, I should call them, the splashes, yeah, the kind of color, color splashes here. Let's say uh, we want to change the number of these. So therefore we just choose our particle fountain layer and press U on the keyboard to reveal our keyframes. And now we move to our particles per second to the emitter settings and just move to the one keyframe which says 55. You see there's one zero, 55 and zero. If you want to decrease the amount of splashes, then you can of course decrease the number here. So let's say instead of 55, I just want to have half of it about approximately so 25. And now let's see what this does. And you see immediately that now uh, we do not have that many uh, splashes. And depending on the shape of your logo or your graphic that you put into this template, this may help. Uh, it will also help you increase the render times if you change these numbers. But if you take a look now, uh, you see that in the reflections, of course, uh, this change did not apply because it's on a separate layer. So we have to change this here too. So let's select the particle fountain reflection layer and you see that they are always colored in the same way. So we will select this one, press U and move to the keyframe and put in 25. And now if we move a few frames forward, you will see that now these are yeah, looking the same again. And you can do this, of course, with any of these layers. So, for example, if you do not want to have so many explosion particles, and these are these drops here that are flying out of our, of our splash, then you can again select particle explosion front, move to this one keyframe that is determining the emitter value and instead of 75,000 you can say I want really only a few splashes let's set it to 25,000 and now let's see we have particle explosion front we have particle explosion back so we want to change this here to so 25,000 and of course we also want to change it in the reflection here so press U and enter 
25,000. And now you will see that we have uh, less explosion particles. Okay, so I think that this is it with the customization for this template. Uh, you see it's pretty easy. And I hope that you like it and that you create really astonishing animations with it. Have fun and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.